What's up, Meta Nerds? This video is all about two obscure new Imperial vehicles, the Imperial Assault Tank and the Imperial Combat Speeder. There are no official stats on either of these, but we can tease out the dimensions, capabilities, and even history from their scenes in the Star Wars canon comics. Let's start by looking at the Combat Speeder. By using the Imperial Troop Transport and ATST as a reference, we can tell that it had a similar width of about 4.5 meters, or 15 feet. This lets us determine a height of 3.5 meters, or 11.5 feet, which would make it about the third of the height of the ATST, and about three times the height of the Seraph class urban land speeder. Then its length of 4.5 meters, or 15 feet, is about a Jawa longer than Luke's X-34 land speeder and 74Z speeder bike. These four large turbines allowed it to hit incredible speeds for a larger, heavier armored and closed cockpit speeder, as it could catch up to the 74Z, which had a maximum speed of 500 km per hour, or 311 miles per hour. That would make it more than five times as fast as the ATST, and one and a half times the TX-130 Sabre tank. Like the CIS's Armored Scout platform, this was a much more protected scout and flanking vehicle, perfect for cutting down troops, without the fear of being taken out by a single well-placed blaster bolt. Its armament seems to be two light laser cannons, though they could be medium laser cannons, but I think that would be too strong for a vehicle like this. Now looking at the Imperial Assault Tank, we can see something very interesting that gives away this vehicle's history. Many people ask what the Empire did with all of those CIS ships and vehicles after the sudden close to the Clone Wars, and with this, we can see that the Empire put the AAT to good use. Some armored assault tanks were known to be seen in the ranks of Rebels, but this is what a heavily armored Imperial version looks like. I selected the profile of the AAT to show you the areas that were added, and if you look at some spots, you can see the iconic shovel-like front with central vent area and the middle door hatch. The laser cannons were left as is, with this main powerful gun up top, secondary laser cannons, and anti-personnel cannons. Though these two images look like a contradiction, with the one on the left only having two laser cannons here, while the one on the right has three, this was an element in the AAT, with that third one being a rangefinder. What you don't see are the launch tubes that lined the front of this CIS tank, but perhaps this was removed due to the different threat posed by the Rebels. The Empire was not fighting many pitched tank battles, but fighting Rebels that often hit out in dense populations. Storing all those explosives right under the ground would make for a catastrophic explosion if they ever drove over a Rebel mine, and having missiles only increases the risk of you taking down parts of the city or killing tons of innocent civilians. I'm not saying that's usually a concern for the Empire, but it's just an unnecessary increase of risk for bad PR, and of course would make this tank more expensive to field. I think the Empire decided that the AAT was a great vehicle, capable of doing enough damage with all those other weapons, and its weak points were just its armor. You can see the large rivets where extra plate armor was attached, and how the profile of this tank gets wider in both the turret area and the base, while it also added this additional second layer beneath the vehicle. I feel like the dimensions of this ship are not very aesthetically pleasing, like the proportions are off, but that is actually not a critique of the artist, but something that makes this vehicle more believable. A vehicle that was created by adding on all kinds of extra parts would not look as good as the original design, and it does look like something that was cobbled together. Using our same reference points, we get a width of 14.4 meters, or 47 feet, making it wider than the AAT and about three ATSTs across. At a height of 11.23 meters, or 38 feet, it was taller than the ATST and about half the height of the ATAT. The length is the hardest to determine, but I believe it would be around 11 meters, or 36 feet long, making it a Wookiee longer than the AAT and equal to three X-34 land speeders. Compared to our standard land vehicle unit of the Jawa Sandcrawler, the combat speeder would have been about one ninth the length, and you could have lined up three and a half assault tanks. For some real world comparisons, the combat speeder was almost the exact same length as the Honda Civic, and the tank would have been just a meter longer than the M1 Abrams, or about half the length of an 18 wheeler. So that's it for the Imperial Assault Tank and Combat Speeder. And the only cool behind the scenes facts is that they both appeared in the Star Wars 3 canon comic, and that the AAT is one of the few CIS ships or vehicles that even could have been used by Imperial troops, as it wasn't run by a droid brain, but instead by a team of B1 battle droids. If you want to connect with us, help support this channel, or get your own copy of the reference material used in this video, be sure to check out the links in the description. Special shout out to our supporters over on Patreon, and be sure to like and subscribe, or click on one of these cards to see other videos like this. But most important of all, 
Remember, you can hate episode 1, but you can't hate the AAT. And the Force will be with you. Always.